the German five star, Le Moulin. Um, it is not so German. It's really fun and friendly and, you know, great competition. For me, Le Moulin is one of my favorite five stars. I, I wouldn't say because it's, it's got the biggest number of competitors at it, but they are just so hospitable in, in Germany and they are just so appreciative that you've made the trip across the, the channel to go to their event. And what do you like about it? I mean, we're on the edge of the Lüneburger Heide. It's, uh, it's kind of sandy, it's pretty flat, but you know, again, a really early opportunity for you was a world championships there, 82. That was, again, a very frightening experience for me because I had a lit the little horse, Davy, that took me to Olympic Games, World Championships, winning Burley, and I went there in 82. And one fence in particular I can remember was two tables where we had to jump the first table and then bounce immediately over the second table. And that, for me, was just extraordinary. Also, the roads and tracks, I remember the... These are the days when we had phase A, B, C, and D, and D being the cross country, and phase A and C were roads and tracks where we had to trot for up to sometimes one hour. And I can remember going out on really deep sandy soil that actually the, the dust from the sand was at exactly the same speed as the wind and exactly the same speed as I was traveling. This was not a pleasant experience, but it doesn't matter how much rain they have and it doesn't matter how dry it is, the ground is always fantastic to run over. Really, really special. And Julia Otto and her team and, and, and everyone, like the whole community seems to really just welcome us, like you say, when, it, when we go there. But it, it just really is something beyond just being welcoming. I mean, it just, it seems so natural there. Yes, there's a definite warmth in their welcome. You can feel it's coming really from the heart. And in so many of the official functions, they're all speaking English. And that is, that's really special when you're going to a country, their language is not your mother language, yet they, make it possible for you to understand what's, what they're talking about. I mean, I see Julia speaking English so much that sometimes when she talks German, I'm surprised that she can. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot you were German. Um, you, you've had some fantastic horses at Le Moulin uh, who sort of, they've gone from winning Le Moulin or, or doing very well there on, onto something else. And I was gonna rattle through a couple of them here, but Gershwin, first of all, who, who went on to the Atlanta Games. So obviously that was a great result. Tell us about Gershwin at Le Moulin. Gershwin, well, a bit, of, a bit of an inside story here. Gershwin was owned by my ex-girlfriend at the time. <laughs> and we had s separated. And anyway, she came across the United Kingdom and asked me if I would actually ride Gershwin at um, Le Moulin. And so I said, yes, for sure. Le Moulin has the ability to put on wonderful parties and I was swinging from the rafters in the marquee that they'd set up. My ex-girlfriend was not impressed. Now with, owner, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, who was then owner of Gershwin, was not impressed with my behavior. She did not see the lighter side of it at all. I said, it'll be absolutely fine, absolutely fine. Then come day of cross country, I sat so quiet on him and I just galloped around the cross country. Gershwin was a wonderful, wonderful horse. So much so that we went on to winning the competition after the show jumping. This was just before the final selection for Atlanta. The other horse that I also had in contention for Atlanta was a horse called Darian Powers. And Darian Powers was selected for the team competition, Gershwin selected for the individual competition in Atlanta. And so I was unbelievably fortunate and then another Olympic horse that sort of came to the fore maybe in Le Moulin was, was Mr. Prakatan. Mr. Prakatan was just an extraordinary horse. I remember I, I won the competition in Le, in Le Moulin with him. The owners weren't even there, Jeremy and Anona Young, they weren't even at the event. And I can remember calling them after I won and they'd gone off on holiday somewhere else. And, 
And I said, look, I have just one with Gershwin, I'm sorry, with um, Mr. Prakatan. And they said, oh, that's really good. I said, are you having a good time? Oh yes, like it's lovely where we are, we're really enjoying it here. And then he went on to be my Olympic horse in 2004 at Athens. Does that mean then that, you know, Le Moulin is, is on your radar? Like when you're thinking, is my horse a burly horse? Is it a championship horse? Is it an Olympic horse? Does that path go through Le Moulin for you? It's really interesting. People say, is it a five-star horse? And that I'm bringing on through and I say, well, yes, I think so. But it's not until I actually run the horse at a five-star competition that you can definitely say, this is a five-star horse. For me, there's one word that really describes what I'm really working towards with both the dressage phase, the jumping phase, and also the cross-country phase. That one word is harmony. It can take me, I believe, up to four years to really get to understand a horse and how the horse is thinking, what the horse finds difficult, how best to ride the horse. Andrew, you know, when we talk about your history at these events, you know, we're talking about Lexington since 78, 79 Badminton Burley, 82 with the Worlds at Le Moulin, and, and seven Olympic appearances, plus an alternate Olympics in 1980. Tell me a little bit about what it has taken, you know, what the sport, the way the sport has developed and what it's taken for you to almost reinvent yourself every generation and stay a, a, at the leading edge. To be successful, there's many things that, that contribute to it. And I can remember my father saying to me when I was really young, when, if you want to be successful, make sure you place good people around you. Good people, whether they be business people or whether they be your service providers or whether they be your partners that you work with. It's about everyone helping to guide along the way and the journey. And there is no athlete and no business person in the world that is always on a rising plane. You have your highs, you have your lows. I say the crime is not making mistake. The crime is not learning from that mistake. And that's where having good people around you, they all contribute to that success. It's not just about me either standing on the podium or receiving a, a, a prize and a trophy at the end of the competition. It's everyone that's contributed right from when I started in Pony Club. Like you say, it's, it's not success all the time. And Recognising those periods when you haven't been successful and, and, and analysing those and moving on from them and becoming successful again, do you feel that that's been, you know, a big thing? Like, I mean, if I maybe look at, you know, 13 to 15 sort of, you know, and, and you, you've said yourself, you know, you recognise that period. The, the thing that I always want to do is I, I want to keep trying to get to that next level. And that changes over, over the years. The fitness that I had as a 20 year old as to the fitness that I have now, it's different. So I have to physically work on these things. And if you want to change something and you're talking about changing muscle memory, you have to take time to do that. And it's the same with training a horse and bringing a horse into the sport and maybe if it's done something else, for instance, over the years, I've had horses that have been race horses and I brought them into the sport. You need to change their muscle memory and, and that takes time. And if you try to do something too quickly, you then end up with horses getting injuries. And I become so upset with myself when a horse um, gets, an, gets an injury. And so much so that I now work with a lady that's very good with the biomechanics of horses. And, and it's also the way that I sit in the saddle and little things that I do and the feeling and it's the communication that you have with the horse that's so important that you have to make sure that the horse has a good understanding and that you work with the personality of the horse. We go back to another Olympic horse at Le Moulin, um, Rutherglen. Now this was 2012. You didn't have a lot to do to go to the Olympics. You had one more round of show jumping to go. Why oh, would you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, the show jumping phase. I do remember. I'd had a fantastic dressage result in Le Moulin. Great cross country round, clear inside the time. I just needed to jump a clear round in the show jumping to really secure a position for the London Olympics. And I jumped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, and then I turn back to jump 10 and 11. And the fence I turned to, I thought, I've already jumped this fence. I'm thinking, this can't be right. And so I then look down at the number. I'm thinking, oh, this is fence five. Where's 10? And 10 was over on the right, so I did a, a turn. I jumped 10, and then I jump 11, and I walk out of the arena, and I'm really mad with myself for almost jumping the wrong fence. And I look at Stephanie, my wife, and she's in tears. And I said, why are you in tears? I should be the one in tears, not you. You didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> anyway, with the support of the selectors, I was selected to go to London and Rutherglen finished the best of the Australian horses. Management and selectors had faith in me. I then produced it on the day in London. The team behind you guys is critical and you know what part of that team at the moment is the Oxton Liqueur Company and they've made me this hmm, rhubarb martini um, and this is part of the Hoy team looking after your owners and supporters mm. so that's you know you like to create that atmosphere the friendly atmosphere like we were talking about with Le Moulin. To be able to give the supporters of the Hoy team the opportunity to enjoy something that is homemade that is very, very special. I'm very privileged to have that opportunity.